Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Him. All of His excellence. And for His mighty power. It is the command of the Abba that everything that has breath, we should berach baruch. We should praise him for the excellence of his mightiest power. For he has an identity in the heritage of Yisra'ya. There is a pulsating and powerful testimony that utters out of the veins of a nation. That's his am, his people, his elect, his nation. And there is a robustness to that nation of people. When they began to comprehend and understand the Dabari, the word, the power of Torah, it brings about what the Torah calls the Ma'ur, the light that shines. It brings forth the excellence of the testimony, Yoshua HaMashiach. Is he not the light that come into the world? Is he not the or the ma'or of Yah that come into the world? And because this is a nation of people that loves darkness more than the light, it's a nation of people that love the Hoshech. Our secret thoughts, our secret endeavors, we love that more than we love truth, Yisra'ya. And I say that to say this, that's why we need those men that are hukham. Huk, huk, ham. They're skilled in Torah. They have wisdom of Torah. You will know them. You will know them by an example. I'm going to preach and teach today. I frankly don't give a damn as to how this generation perceives me and what the Torah commands unto us. So I am not concerned if it's an offense unto you because your sure is an offense unto you. Your own achim, your own brothers and achorim, your sisters are an offense unto you. So I frankly don't give a damn. As to your speculative uh, concept of what I shall teach and who I am, it doesn't trouble me one bit. Because I shall not be bound by this weak, frivolous generation of men. Not me. I will not. And so when you find one that has the koach, the strength, or the knowledge of his Torah, you will know. That you've been among a man. What's wrong with one being a man? Tell me. We young boys, we would say, I'm a man like you. You were not a man like the one you identified as a man. It's one thing you knew that he was a man. You were a boy. And you're still trying to impress yourself that you're a man. You're still a boy. And that's a fact. Hallelujah. I'm going to teach with profound wisdom of simplicity, intelligentsia, and knowledge of the matter. If it's one thing you boast my, I have nothing to boast in but Yeshua HaMashiach. I am thoroughly rehearsed when it comes to the knowledge of matters that I teach. I'm not like a little boy that finds a toy and wants to tell everybody, look what I saw, look what I read. That's a little boy. But a man of wisdom, he ponders what he reads because there's an element that he negates every time. That's why he has no ability to do one thing. I will teach that, all right? I got something for us. I've already received that email from Achmichaya saying, All right, preacher man, we're ready to hear. So I may disappoint you and the rest of the audience, but I won't disappoint him. 
Hallelujah. Because his ears are open to hear and to perceive what Yah is speaking to Yisrael. I like that word that he used for us, an, A-N. That is his people, his nation. He will say, you are my nation. An, A-N. In our vernacular, same enunciation. We are the an, his people, his elect. His sugula, a sugula people. It is a people that have riches and the plethora of wealth. And it is all secretive. He doesn't want anyone else to know what they know. He doesn't share those riches outside of the proxy of Yisrael. Not all are Yisrael. Not all that proclaim, although there were those that came among the nation, they were the gay, they were strangers. And they never gave themselves for over unto the rites and the rituals that Yah commanded the same in this generation of repugnant wicked men and women. We have not given ourselves over unto Torah. We have this aversion, this distaste for Torah. And we certainly do not know how to love because we don't give a damn. And it's a fact. Don't tell me you love me. I don't want to hear that folly. Hell, you don't even love yourself. When a man loves himself, he... He watches. He watches the gate of his mind, the gate of his ruach, the shakha. Those things which come through his thought process. And above all, he guards the gate, gate of his love. For every wicked issue and thought proceed from a man's wicked heart. There's one thing about the strength of a man. He never has to prove he's a man. When I go places, I don't have to prove I'm a man. I don't have to prove with, with my physicality. Or not. I don't have to prove that. I don't have to prove the matter of man I am. I don't have to do it. And the strength of my physicality, I don't say it to boast, but to give us reference. I will compare it to any man my age. And that's a fact. And I don't condescend on that one. My physicality at all. Because I believe what the Torah says. And in believing that, it gives me preference to begin to love me first. And when I learn how to love me first, I can love her. And when I learn how to love her, I can love you. But it begins with me. And that process is one of great critiquing and refining and speaking to your damnable, uh, abominable, to Ebba actions, deeds that you perform uh, in the most sata, the most secretive of chambers of your wickedness and your corruption. So until you know how to critique you, you will go to hell because you will not critique me. It is your refineness that critiques me. It is like a wife that yasas in Baruch. When a man finds a gem, her beauty, you will tell in her inspiration what her aspiration is, because one of the most pronounced things about that woman, uh, she has a well-ordered home. Are we the woman of Yah? So this bed shall be well-ordered. You find a woman that her house is not well-ordered, uh, you find a damn busybody and woman, and we as a nation, we are involved in everything but what Torah says. She has time for everyone else's home, but no time for her home. Her home must be well ordered. And the house of Yisra'ya the Be'at, it must be well ordered. 
Everything must be in its proper place. There can be no sign of laziness and shiftlessness in that woman. And it cannot be with us as well. And that's a fact. Listen, I, I don't care if people don't uh, uh, care for what I say. It is still the truth. You can't refute what I say. You can't back me down. And you don't have the spiritual intelligentsia to try to convince me of your ignorance, uh, even of your statements. You can't do it. You may do it with those that are as shallow as you. But you can't do that with me. And that's a fact. Aren't you glad? No more than a man is going to outwork me. I said to my ach, you want to talk that, son? I fired him to my pleasure, to my reward. Rewards and very rewarding because his back is thick and strong. You pushing those seven, eight hundred pounds, bales of straw. It's heavy. And so I needed a back like that to help me. It's heavy. It's not like what well, when you finish, you feel that in your chest, your body. I said to my Isho, I'm gonna begin teaching here in a moment. It's one thing about me when there is ailments or maladies in my body. The first thing I do, I like to go to the gym. My knee was hurting the other day because the labor Ach Yosef and I. Of course, Ach Yosef says to me, I, I want to get to the end line before you. I said, uh, you're not going to do it. But yet he did. He got there with me. Because I work so far this way, I get on his row and work toward him. Then I go back and work so far. When I see he's that far, I go back and work toward him. Then I go and work my row and go back and work his row out. And so uh, at the end, uh, he finished that row the same time. The matter of fact, he finished it ahead. How about that? What is that? What does that imply? That we esteem others, strengthen them, and their, their purpose and their labor is as valuable as your labor. No different. Little that a Sadiq man does is greater than all the riches of one that is boastful. Lucretius talkative as to what they do. It's better than that. It's greater than that, Yisraya. So I'd rather have a man like that to work beside me. And I bear up his infirmities as he bears mine. It will be difficult to do it by myself. So he makes it less cumbersome. His help. But I said to my Isho, my knee was hurting. I don't say what I say to be boastful, Yisrael. And so I go to the gym. When I go, I, I like to put the weight on the bar. I like to stack it down, get it heavy. And that's the only way that it seems as though it works out every little niche. When I did that, everything was all right. She said to me, I know you. You're hurting even more. I said, no. It did make me feel so much better. What interrelation or correlation has that to do with Yah? What a man, since the maladies are the deformity of his mind, if he will go in the Torah, he will find him and his Rafa, his healing right there. Instead of us trying to be teachers, we ought to be hearers uh, and resolving the things in our own lives as when others see us, uh, they will see the ma'or of Yah upon us. You don't find that today. I find this fledgling spirit of men uh, that are weak. Everywhere I go, they're not strong men. 
They got talk, but they're not strong in the knowledge of the Torah because they're missing one thing. And I will show you what they're missing, all right? I greet you all, Yisrael, and your sure's mighty day. Our friends, our listeners, as well as you, our enemies, and I know I have enemies listening to me. Oximion, the other day, we were out to acquire some items for the community. And he said that there is a businessman in this area that we deal with buying tractor parts and things like that. He had a customer in Georgia that called him undoubtedly concerning a part for one of his farm vehicles. And he asked this individual in this area, he asked him, quote, are you the scoundrel that sold that man, Reach David Yisrael, the land there in Jefferson? Unquote. See, my enemies are far and abroad. I like that. I like that. Because it shows me the cowardiceness of this coward. He listens. He hears, yet Yah will not convince or convict his heart that he is a child of hell threefold. Are you the scoundrel that sold that man the land? That shows you his ignorance. In South Carolina is a vastly populated state, even rural, the rural areas. Of course, not that many, nearly six million people, but uh, I could have bought it from any of the six million people. He inquired that because he wanted to know or tr try to see if he could get something on me, which people do lie on me, and that's all right. I have no problem with that. None whatsoever. But they have not the character the intestinal fortitude to confront me because I will chew their ass off. I will. Where? In the book. So greeting to you, our Zachin Dayon Yad Toda for the call this morning so that we can refine things from this in and also to the house of Yahweh there in Los Angeles, California, our Zachin Davis and those that are gathered with him this day as we're looking forward to being with you all in a very dynamic service there on June 7 and 8th. We greet you all in your sure, smarty name, as well as our Ahot uh, Lucretia there in West Virginia, our Ach uh, Frank and his Isha, Diana. We greet you in your sure, smarty name, our precious Ahot Blackman there in New Jersey. Your offerings are tremendous. And whatever Yah puts on your heart to assist, we do appreciate it greatly. Your kind gifts uh, of great substance every time they come. We greet you as well as our Tesner and the family there in Florida. We greet you all, all of our friends, our Ach Yaakov there in Texas. We greet you, our Ach, our friend Marianne. We greet you, our precious Oho, and all of you all, even. If I don't announce your name, you're in the heart of Yisra'ya. So we greet you all. Your Yeshua's mighty and precious name. We greet you from the whole bed here to Shur community. Yahweh's congregation, his ochel. That's what the congregation is too, isn't it? That's how you enunciate the word congregation. Hebraic. O hyphen. H-E-L. Ochel. Ochel. And it's full of hell, isn't it? What a proper name. Oh, hell. Oh, hell. Oh, hell. And it is full of hell. And hellish ways and wicked ways. Now, we're going to get confronted here. You that listen, you're going to get confronted. And that's the fact of the matter. I'm going to confront you in every word that I speak to show us that we are not Oh, yet clean. That's what Yahshua said when the one would betray him. 
ירור, ענץ, תחה, תחכו, נר אול אוכלין. נר אול אוכלין סרמוניוסלי, נר אול אפירופייד, in the order of cleansing through the Kohen, he said, not all clean. For he knew that one would betray him. And we are tough at betraying one another, Israel. We betray one another with strangers. You tell me you're a strong man, you're a coward of a jackass. You're not strong, you're weak. Hallelujah. And if you're a man like me, please, I can use some labor. Come work with me for two days and just work with me. And then you will find out if you're a man like me. I don't offend you and say I'm a man like you because uh, you can't work like me. You don't have the vision nor the passion I have because I see things in a greater paradigm than me. The cause is greater than me. And when you find us as a nation where we can't esteem others more highly, we're sick in our minds. We're always trying to esteem our own knowledge and what we think we know. You are sick. You don't know a damn thing. Because how can you understand the definitives of Torah when you can't even define a simple word? So you read things unintelligently upon your own ignorance of your speech. So how can you know if you don't understand the definitive? I want to teach you today. I want you all to hear this. Because there is one word I want to deal with. You all know there's a reason that I deal with one word. There's a reason that I deal with one spirit. And I'm continuing to deal with that spirit in a hush. I want to show you the reason why. But to understand a matter or a thing, you must be gone in Torah. And I want to be gone here in the book of Kohat, Ecclesiastes. In the book of Kohat, the preacher man talks. In the book of Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 1. I want us all to find that book, Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 1. We cannot go around the Torah of Yah. I want to read this. This will be the premise of this preaching, this yelling, this talk. That I shall proceed in on this Shabbatont. This is the veracity of a wise man with the wisdom of Yah. And what he does that his own wisdom commends him. And so the messenger speaks here. Kohati, a Kohat, Ecclesiastes 8.1. It says... Who is as wise, who come, who is as learned at? When a man is a who come, he is a shoots man. He is a learned at man. He has the ability to differentiate between the intellectual knowledge and the things that are of the Ruach of Yah. He is a skillful man in administering the rightfulness of Torah and above all that he is a cunning man. He is a man that knows when to talk. He is a man that refrains his lips. He's a man that is quiet because uh, he is a man that does one thing. He feeds uh, the mind, the Ruach of Yah. Because when the Ruach of Yah comes, it will not, he will not speak of himself, but will speak of that which he has, what? Shemach, which he has heard. And so that is a hukham, a man that is wise, that actually, uh, he works in a way that is very subtle. His words are subtle. His words are placed righteously. And every word accounts for great measure. 
Because it proceeds from a mind that is wise. Listen to me. Who is the wise man? That's the question. Is there not a question mark there? So there is a question being imposed. Is it not? Who is the wise man? And it says this. Who yada? Who knows? The Peshia. The interpretation. Is that the way it is translated in the writings of your rendition? Who knows the interpretation of a dream, of many words, of, of a word? Does it say that? We're ignorant. We're so ignorant it is pathetic. It is a disease in our mind. He did not say who knows the Peshia of the Torah. He said, who knows the interpretation of a singular, of a word. Why is that? Because every word that Yah speaks is pure. Every word that he utters, it is dynamic. Who knows the Peshia, the interpretation of a word? Implying, who understand what solution shall come forth out of a word? Who understand the Peshia? And we are people that look at things in the broadness of sense, don't we? That's why we can look at the ills of others and we never see our own ills, Yisrael. But who understand the interpretation of a word, of a Dabar? Not the Dabarim, not the words, the promises of Yah. Who can understand the interpretation of a promise of Yah? That's what it says. It does not have a S on the word, 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 does it? then it will imply a plural state uh, of words. It says, who can understand the interpretation of a word? There's a reason that, uh, that I'm going this route. When we can understand the interpretation of a word, when a wise man understands the interpretation of a word, it produces something that is of a great monumental thing. My bad. Who can understand? Who can pay share? Who can understand the solution of a word? Who interprets that? We know that, uh, that even in the Torah of Yah, Kepha said, knowing first, this is the first order of business, Yada of first, uh, that the Torah, the Chitve, uh, is no of no private interpretation. What was he saying? That it is meant for go all Yisrael to know. So if you have something that is important and valuable, you do not go as a recluse and share that. You open it up. That's why there was always a market among Yisrael who understands the interpretation of a word. Anyone else has anything different than those two last words? A word? Does it say that? It says a word, doesn't it? So we know that that implies of a singular seat. I'm doing this because there is a word I want you to understand today. What a man understands what he pays here. When you understand the interpretations of a word, uh, it says this, read. It says, a man's wisdom, uh, it makes his face to shine. There's an awe. There's a awe on him. There's a light of such beauty. Isn't the sun beautiful when you see it rises in the morning? It causes his face to be set afire. It caused his countenance to blaze with the light and the life of Yeshua HaMashiach when he can interpret or, or pay share, when he can interpret a word of Torah. When he realized that this is the vital link to all, uh, he rejoices. You see it uh, in his countenance, uh, in his ma'or, that his face uh, caused the light of rejoicing to emanate from him. Uh, and he rejoices. If we look at our countenance, you look at yours, uh, we cannot find that awe. We find death and folly. We find this insane stupidity. 
Because we think we know and we need to be taught. You're trying to be teachers and you need to be taught yourself, first of all, the first principles of the truth of Yah. Can I tell you what the first principle of Yah's truth is, my Ima? It is simply this, the first commandment. Shemach here. Chol Yisraya. And we like to be heard, don't we? Yeah, you do. And you're ignorant. Shemach Chol Yisraya. Yas Ichach. Ichach ya. Shemach. Here. A word, my son. You hold me to the line today, all right? It says a word. Who can understand the interpretation of a word? Only a wise man can. Because he must go beyond the parameter of his unintelligible language. His language is unintelligible. His language uh, is not precise. Uh, it is not crisp. Uh, there is this prattling. Uh, he talks, uh, but he doesn't understand what he is saying. He is one that prattles. Talk, talk, talk. As our Ark Shimri says, talk is not cheap. He is one that prattles. It is not cheap. Because it wastes my time and it wastes your time. It wastes others' time and it wastes your time. When he ought to be trying to understand the interpretation of a word. Not words, but a word. The dynamics of this will be made known. Don't, don't worry. I, I got you covered. Don't worry, my friend. Okay. It says that a man of wisdom or a man's wisdom, uh, it makes, because he understands the beauty of that word, it makes his face to shine. It talks about his poneme. It makes his face to shine. His presence uh, will cause you to light up. When you face a man or woman whereby there is no light of rejoicing even through the, the, the most battling circumstances in your life, uh, they have no interpretation of a truth. When a man understands the interpretation of a word, uh, when you come into the midst of that man, that woman's presence, uh, it causes the ma'o of Yah to shine upon you. That's what it does. And because we don't understand the pish here, the interpretation, the solution of a word, uh, a child will you say, stop! They understand that. It means just that. And then that began to channel in all kinds of latinicals uh, to all kinds of things. The mind began to say, oh, okay, I understand why. She says, stop. We must understand the pish here, the solution. Is your sure the words or the word? He is the word. He is the daba that was a sad fashion made. So a man must, a wise man, he understands Yisraya, the interpretation of a word. And you will know that because his face is set afire. There's life in his face. What I see up in my mess, I will let them know. Look at your damnable, solid look on your face. You're trying to be a teacher. You're trying to correct others. Uh, and you have not corrected yourself. I don't give a damn if they don't love me. It used to, it used to be a day when people would say, what's wrong with you? Oh, oh nothing is wrong. No, no, baby doll. Something is wrong with you, huh? Because they could tell by your face. And this stupid, immature generation has no concept of that. And I don't care who you are, I would tell you, your mama, your daddy, your sons, your daughters, and I will confront you as well. We must understand the interpretation of a word. It will cause a man's face to shine. And it talks about his boldness, his uzza. It talks about his strength. His strength is magnified. And when he walks, everybody knows he's a strong man. See, my wisdom speaks of the volume of my strength. I'm not timid with men. I don't have to set up a defense with men. I don't have to do that. If anything, they're going to set a defense with me. And then when I break down their defense, how do I do it? Can I tell you? The Torah tells us it is the meekness of one's words that turn away wrath. How you doing, man? How is everything? With that look, how you doing? You all right? Everything is all right? All right then. Nice to see you, my friend. 
This is a stupid generation. We need men that have the hukhan, the skillfulness of the wisdom of Yah, to teach us how to fight the battle that is ahead of us. When men can't fight their own lust and their own propensity, these are weak men. When men do not understand that there must be a drawing of the wise counsel you must draw to that, that's a weak man. It's just the truth. And so one thinks because of the physicality that that makes them strong. Your physicality doesn't mean a damn thing to me. It doesn't have any bearing at all. You don't have to worry about me touching you, but you're not going to touch me. You don't even have to worry about that. I'm not going to touch you. And you better not touch me either. Hallelujah. You must well love me because I... I'm going to break this down. Listen to what it says here. It says that, and the boldness or the might of his strength makes no difference whether it's political, whether it's, whether it's spiritual, it is of great boldness. When you see a man's face and you see the ma or the light of his strength, you know that you're dealing with a wise man. When you look at a man's face, you see the dullness, the bath of his eye on. You see no, no, no light, the ma or you don't see. I'm not talking about you grinning and skinning there. I've seen those come and go, uh, full of laughter, full of folly. And they don't have a damn thing. They don't have a thing. Nothing. Because you like the grin and skin, you like that association. I don't grin and skin. My big show, yesterday we were working, we weren't talking Torah. We were doing what Torah said. Leave, bear the burdens of one another. That's what we did. Didn't have to talk Torah. We performed Torah. Loving your neighbor as you love yourself. Uh, I was not going to relent uh, and cause the burden to be upon him more heavy than me. You got men that want to talk Torah. Well, I want to go and talk to him. Uh, and you leave your walk for two or three hours. I've seen them do this here. Just to run your damn wicked mouth, you jackass. No, we do Torah. We asa, we perform Torah. We, we, we apply the applicable applications of Torah. That's what we do. So we work. Slow to speak. And the labor is toilsome. Sure it is. We do Torah. Hallelujah. And then when we finish, we can rejoice in Torah. My Ark, I appreciate your help. Toda, my friend. Appreciate your help. Toda. Thank you. I always say that to whoever works with me. Appreciate your help. Man. I needed it. Always. Yeah, who it is? Appreciate you helping yourself. Give me a hug. All right. So a wise man will do that, but not a fool. Not a jackie. Because a man that is wise, he's assured of his ooze. He's a strong man. And every application of his life, whatever he does, presents this strength. And you see it. His walk, his labor, his talk. You see that. I'm saying that because if you don't get this, you won't get what I will teach you today, all right? This is the preface. It says this, and the boldness of his face shall shana. It shall alter, it shall change. See, the boldness is strength. His unintelligible uh, filtering of the knowledge of Yahweh, when he understands the interpretation of the word, his whole countenance changed. Ah, that's all right. Back in the days, there was a song. I don't recall who sang the song, uh, but they didn't even know what uh, they were singing. But they used the Hebraic words. Sha-na-na, sha-na-na-na-na. Oh. Who sang that? But it was a song that went like that. You remember that? You all were sure enough lames then. It was a song that went that way. Shanana, Shanana, na na, your mama. 
You don't remember? Oh, you are lying, then. I remember it. And so what a man's strength is shana, shana, na, shana, na, na, oh. It causes his countenance to change. When he understands the interpretation of the wise speech of Torah, his whole idea, his concept, all of that changes. That's his strength. When he changes his ponim, his house is well ordered. His mind is ordered by the order. My steps in the Torah diyah. Teach me, guide me every day. Senor Hakodesh, oh yeah. Or a machalach in your Torah. So, this is the proven examination of one that is a wise man. He examines. Every word. Because Yah has entrusted him with every word. He's entrusted him with Yoshua Hamashiach. He's entrusted us with this Torah. That's why we must interpret every word. The an, the the, the is, the I, the no, the yes, chen, lo. We must examine it all. There's a reason for that, Yisrael. We as the bride of Almighty Yah, even as Sharak says here, you will understand this as I teach. Sharak says, hear this. Sharak 26.16, it says, like the Shemesh, the sun, it's not the earth that rises or bow into end, it's the sun. As the sun rises in the heights of Omar Yah, is not there a Torah for the sun, the moon, the celestial bodies of Yah? So as the sun rising in the heights of Yah, so is the beauty of a Tav Ishal in a well-ordered home. We are the Ishal of Yah. Our home, our bed, must be well-ordered. It must be refined, critiqued by Torah. It must be in the precise image or the way of Torah painting or the carving or the description of this woman. She must follow and have all the attributes of Torah. And her house must be well ordered. She's not given to folly. She's given to truth. She's not given to this, the, this immature usurping uh, or identifying herself as being something she isn't uh, or trying to prove. I don't try to prove a damn thing to this generation. Just like our Ak Yaakov there in Jacksonville, he said, I wish the people would come and see. I said, no, I don't want them to come. They're not welcome here. I don't have to prove a damn thing to them. I got to prove to them, but they don't prove to me. It's like that woman called and said that uh, my, uh, her healer wanted to come. Uh, but I want to warn you, he's tough. I said, hold up, woman. Who you think you're talking to, a boy that needs some kind of comfort of someone coming here? You're not talking to a boy, woman. Uh, no, you better warn him. He didn't come, by the way. You better warn him. Against me. You think I'm letting a thief come in my house and I got to be warned? No, you, I see you, devil. I want to warn you against him. He's tough. I said, hell, he's, he hasn't met me then. He doesn't know what toughness is. Soft as cream puff, I guarantee you. Get out in the fields with me a week and I'll find out how tough you And you get a water break, you can drink all the water you want. We'll bake you some cookies to get you some, some energy quick. I won't eat one thing in the morning. I get out there and work harder than you twice and will not eat one piece of bread. Because the purpose is greater than me. Hallelujah. He goes on to say this. Like the shining. Same thing with the wise man. Like the shining lamp on the Kodesh candlestick. You see how these lights shine here and emanate the light? 
This is a chador. This is the menorah. This represents the seven ruachim of Yah. Because that one has the seven ruachim of Yah. That one has that. It says, like the shining lamp or the near of the Chodash candlestick, so is the beauty, listen, so is the beauty, so is the beauty of the face in right age. We in our late 50s and 60s, and we don't see no tiferah, no yafef, no beauty upon us, man or woman, in a well-ripened face. Something is twisted in our, in our minds. We get older, we should look more beautiful. Our faces should shine with the, with, the, with the interpretation of that words. And we don't have that something that's wrong in us, Yisra'ya. Well, you don't see it in the elderly men. You don't see it in the elderly women. Something is twisted. What, what, what inspiration does the young Baptist Zion has to shoot for? What inspiration does a young man? I don't want to be like him. There were those that I met as a young man that I would watch them preach uh, and I would say, yeah, I don't want to talk like that man. I don't want to express things the way like him. I don't want to be like him. I don't want to talk like him. I don't want to present the message of your truth like that man. You understand? And so the house is well ordered. You will see it in your olden age, Yisrael. As we get older, like myself and you, you will see that in the beauty of your countenance. You don't have to walk to draw no attention I don't have to put on no tank top to draw no attention. Yeah. I say to people that when my issue and I go, you all say, well, he's trying to. No, I'm telling you the truth. And I'm not going not to say that because you don't want me to say it, whether you like it or not. I was telling one other day whether the people are young or old, they don't look at us because we hold hands. That's not the thing. They look because they see the the illumination of a beauty and a strength, and they see it. They see it in the assurance of this man when he walks, and they see it in that halted walk of hers, uh, and she got this. I don't care if I got on dirty blue jeans, it makes no difference. And they see that. But this young man or young woman, I watch it all the time. We must get our houses, sweep around your own front door. Quit trying to help someone when you are no help to you. You are a damn fool, man. That's the nature of Yisra'ya. Did not they try to help Yah when he brought them out? We build us so damn God. Did not they do that? And we will strive unto these golden calves. That this is who brought us out of the land of Misraim. Just like Zachin taught us with Avraham and Tirah, his father. How he went out and said, you damn God ain't worth a damn. You all don't remember that. Some of you all can't even remember each other's names. You're not going to remember what he taught. But you've got to remember the power and the unction of Torah. You can't. I don't care if you get offended. You get upset. You need to find your place and understand your limitations and what you have. See, a fool get angry. You speak anything that confronts his heels and his stupidity gets mad. You see, the Torah says that a wise man, his face will change because of the wisdom he has. His ooze. A fool's face will change too when you talk to him. No different. I don't care if you get upset with me. It makes no difference at all. You're just trying to show you unless you get it right, you're not going into the kingdom. And you're right in your own eyes. And all of your ways, they're right, are they not? All of the ways of a man, the ways he goes, they're pure in his own sight. But you pundits, you think you're right? You think you're so sure? You can't receive no correction. You are a fool. You can't allow someone to speak to your ears. You are a damn fool. I don't want your presence, no way. Wise man hears and he becomes wiser, doesn't he? Your wise woman hears the sound reproof and they become wiser. 
Do you understand the interpretation of a word? I want to show you one. I was there laboring the other day, physically, and my mind was turned toward Torah. I could not wait till I got home to just search out this one word as I was in the gym one day and trying to restore my body from the hard day's labor. And soon as prayer was over with and we talked a little, I rushed to my bay and, and began to open the book and began to understand the interpretation of just one word. I will show you that word. I want your attention to be drawn unto the mitzvah, Numbers, the book of Numbers, the 21st chapter, the book of Numbers in the Torah. Numbers 21, Numbers 21. And I want to begin here at verse 4. I am still dealing with this nachash, this mind that uh, is so condescending toward Yah. It literally speaks with a vocal, uh, vociferous attitude uh, to say, you don't tell me a damn thing. Does Yah command us, those that are wiser, did not e your friend. I will show you the ignorance of this damn uh, stupid generation. Did not e your friend, did not they lay the boom on him? They call him everything but a child of hell. They told him he was wicked. If you're so right, then why is this? But a damn fool today, you show him he's foolish and his father, he gets angry. And through all of that, you, Eob, did not charge you foolishly. And yet they will want to talk about Eob. And they want to preach on Eob. And they want to share the wisdom of Eob. And yet they don't see what they are lacking that Eob possess. You understand? Those were his friends. They were older than him. And they were wise. They were wise men. They were not a drop shot under him. You think that Yah would have sent men that were drop shots to him? He said, friends, who had sat in the gate at the council of Eob's father. And he as a boy watched them talk on the power of Torah in the marketplace. These were not boys. They were all men. They knew the way of Yah. They talked with his father. They exercise the power of Torah with his father. This damn stupid generation. Yah did not. He sent those there that would uh, cause his, uh, the fire of Yah to flow on him. Then he sent one that was younger. <laughs> that he didn't open his mouth. He waited. Yahshua is the begotten son. That's what Elahu represented. You understand? And he waited until the council of the elders of the Zachim had settled in his mind. And then, only then, did he speak. I like the way you talk, man. I like the way this man talks. I do. I learn from this man. I like the way this man talks. I learn from this man. Hallelujah. No, you can't talk like me. You don't have the energy I have. Most of these preachers are big belly, greedy dogs and hogs, greedy for money, they're lustful. They got time for television all damn day, but no time for ya. And that's a fact. It says here in the book of Bimits about Numbers 21, verse 4, I want to deal with one word. Give you the interpretation. It tells us that Yisra'ya, the nation of Yah, they made their path to the Mount of Hor. I know the word Hor doesn't mean a whore, but these were whores. The word Hor means the mountain of the stony place. They went and they journeyed to the Hor. They did not walk in the way, but by the way. See, it's a difference between walking in the way or by the way. They walked by, by the way of the Yam, the Red Sea. They came by the living water. Yoshua is the living water. He is the way. He is the way. 
He is the truth. He is the life. And instead of them walking in the way, they came by the way. He brought them out of the way of the Red Sea. They walked by the Red Sea. It was the power to save them and to deliver them from their filthiness. They did not lose contact with him. They did not lose one child or one thing, not even the hair of the head. Fell into the young. They walked by the way. And that's what we as a nation we're doing. We're walking by the way. Now, we're not walking in the way. We're not coming by the will of the living world. We're going by the will. That's the power of Nahash, how it rises up in us and its strength to seduce us and bring us by the way, but not in the way. And to go around the land of Edom and the Nephish of the people, isn't that amazing? Their life, their substance out of all that Yah had done, it says that the Nephish of the people, the people was Chatzah, much discourage they were very impatient don't get impatient my ah y'all will send your wife that her beauty will cause your face to shine there are men that want to have a wife just for some sexual proudness you want a wife a damn fool wants that if you never touch a wife and there are men that want them just for that to say i got a wife you send your husband, woman, not a boy, not a weak. When I marry you, it's going to be a wedding. The wedding of Kaye. And that's a fact. I'm going to sing. We're going to shout. We're going to have a beauty of colors. We're going to be arrayed. It's a wedding. You have never seen one like this one. Well, this is not my first time saying that. I say this to the Ach. And tell her nothing. You just wait on you. Don't be chatza. Don't be chatza. Become discouraged and vet. Irritable. Like a damn fool boy. You wait. You got foolish men that they are discouraged. I want a wife. You're not even a husband. You don't even know how to love. You have no beauty about you. Because if you had a beauty about you, there would be some woman say, ah, what a beautiful man. There's nothing beautiful about you. And that's a fact. They were very discouraged, very vexed. Listen now. And the people were much discouraged because, because of the way. Did not Yah bring them through the way? He brought them out victoriously. They were not discouraged because of, uh, of the great uh, agonies uh, that, the, that the people of the Mishrai put upon them. Uh, but they were discouraged because of the way. And we say that we walk in the way, the truth of Yah, and we are discouraged. I'm not discouraged. Hallelujah. Look at this little small crowd here today. I'm not discouraged. Hallelujah. I love this woman as much as I love me. But if she walked out today, I would not be discouraged. Would I hurt? Sure, for, for a while. But I'll get over that. I will get over it. How I got over. How I got over. Oh, my mind looks back and wonder. How I got over. Oh, the pains were in part. Did that sort of I'm going to bring the fire to the arts of Yisrael today. Verse 5. And the people, and the people, and the people spoke against. You know when you do something against someone, you know what that implies? It is of hostility. You do it in a hostile way of an enemy. And they spoke against, they spoke against Yahweh. Oh, I will never do that. We do it all the time. They spoke against. Does it say that in the book? Yes. They spoke against Yahweh. They spoke against Yahweh. Who don't have a wife? They spoke against Yahweh. They spoke 
When one speak against you or do something against you, it is a hostile mentality. It is one to cause harm to you. So when you speak against Yah, you're trying to do him harm. That's why we should not, we should guard our words against Yisra'ya. We should be careful how we speak against them. You should be careful how you speak against your Achiochot. And they spoke against Yah and also against Moshe. That is the first sign of the senility of this Nahash, this mind. I'm going to show you the root of this Nahash. It's not worth a damn thing. Your thoughts, your conceited ways means nothing to Yah. And they spoke not only against Yah, but they spoke against Moshe. And they asked, why have you brought us out of Misraim to die in the Bimitz bar? He says, there is no life, there is no bread, there is no lecture, man. There is no bread, neither is there any mayim, any water to refresh. He says, and they says, and our nefesh, we literally love this kill this damn light bread. What they were saying, we loathe this light way that Yah has brought us. We despise this way that Yah is bringing us. We hate, that's what they say. That's what, that, it was a light uh, way, Yisra'ya. We should take the yoke of Yahshua and learn of him. For his yoke is easy and his burden is light. You must understand the interpretation of the word, you understand? That's what Yahshua said. You can read this all day long, you will not understand that. That's why we see the proliferation of ignorant men that don't know a damn thing, trying to teach. And they teach each other to make each other even more dumb. I never liked being around dumb, silly men. Even as a young boy, I didn't like dumb men. What are you saying? Oh, there were men that did not have the veracity or strength of knowledge, but they were smart. They were smart men. And when they talk, the grammatic formation was not as properly uh, uh, functional as mine, but their speech was much more functional than mine. They saw when they spoke, they spoke with the intuition and the ingenuity of things that they knew. They did not try to go outside of the circles of things that they didn't know. You can learn from men like that. That's why I used to sit with a grandfather all the time. I used to love sitting with that old man, just talking. I didn't say nothing. I let him talk. Didn't get up until he would finish. And when he began talking, he could talk three or four hours, five hours without halting. And I knew when I would sit with him what he was going to do, talk. So that has nothing to do with one in the, in, in, intelligence or intellectual proudness. Has nothing to do with that. You must understand the interpretation of a word. See, a wise man, he always study every word. A damn fool draws the conclusion without understanding a word. You got to understand that word. You got to understand that word. You got to understand that word to understand what this implies. You understand? Am I making sense, my young Aka? I will prove it out. So they said, we detest this hell, this light bread. This bread, it is worthless. It is a worthless bread. We detest the light yoke that Yahshua put upon us. We want to prove that we have the mastery of things. And we don't have the mastery of nothing. You don't have the mastery of your light because it's like a vapor of smoke. It appears and it's only but for a moment. I want everything that I do from my day, from this day forward to speak uh, of the excellent of the testament of your shoe that's in my bosom. Uh, I don't need to make no name for me. I'm not trying to make no name. My name shall go the way of every man's name. Your name will be forgotten. You think those that have those that doubt out here that they remember them? You think old Mother Banks and children even think about her? You think Bishop Banks they do? Stop that. And if we think that we're going to leave some kind of resounding memorial, I want it in the kingdom. I don't want it here on the earth. I don't care if nobody remembers me. I want this bread of life to be remembered in your heart. So they call the way of Yah this light bread. And because of that, 
It says in verse 6, And Yah sent the fiery Nechash. He sent a spirit among them to ignite that fire of this great despair against Yah. I got one that lived here at one time with parents, what you will call parents, wrote me and said that I am a devout atheist. I said, I don't give a damn. You want someone to respect you? Well, I, I believe uh, if that individual understood the protocol of atheists, uh, it would tell you to honor all and respect all. Whether you're faggot or dog, it tells you that. But yet this person says uh, that I am a devout atheist. I, atheist, I say, you're an immature little silly one. I'm coming down your way. Can you meet with me? No. Hey, David Roberts, I will be down your way. Don't you think it would be wise you meet with me? I responded, hey, same way she said it. I said, I don't think it would be wise to meet with you. How about that? Nah. Then they responded, okay. We've got to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. You have to be wise. So Yah sent the fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people. <clears throat> and many other people died, moose. They died prematurely. When Yah uses the word moose and my faith, there are many ways to express death. But when he used the word mus and mavit, he is saying that the people died. It is simply this, my bath, that the people died because of the neglect of the counsel of the wisdom of Yah. You see, they began to speak against Yah. And then they began to speak against Yah's messenger. So the people died. This is what Nahash does. The day that Adam and Haba sinned against Yah, they caused the great uh, channel of death to be open. And from that time, men died. And they died prematurely because they did not have the wise counsel of the wisdom of Almighty Yahweh. One having the spirit of Nahash, you will never understand the wise counsel of Yah. Any time you exude your mind, uh, Anytime you exude your mind, whereby you're beyond correction, you don't think that you deserve to be correction. You are a damn fool. You're going to die, damn fool. Correction to a, to a wise man in a more than a thousand stripes upon the damn back of a fool. You correct a wise man. That reproof will enter more into his heart than a thousand stripes on the back of a silly jackass of a fool. And that's a fact. I'm not preaching this for love. I'm preaching this because I love him. And I love me. Hallelujah. So Yah says, uh, as they began to be bitten, the fiery serpents, Many died, verse 7. Therefore the people came. See, only then they came to Moshe and said, You see the messenger? We have, uh, we have incurred the guilt of sin. See, the spirit of Nehash will never let you say that. It will cause you to do one thing. It will cause you to hide. That's what Havan... And Adam, did they hear it from Yah? Did they not? They hear it. And so you will hide your secretive counsel with men that are as wicked as you. And you're able to keep secrets with them. Uh, and you're able to keep your mouth shut for them. Uh, because there's something in you that is, that, that is cataclysmic corrupt. It's going to bring you down. That There's a mayhem in you. Uh. So they went to the messenger and said, we have sinned, we are unclean. We, how, how many men will come and say, I'm a filthy thing? You tell them they're filthy, they will never say, I'm an unclean thing. Even though Khafas said, not only my feet will wash me. We will never confess. How many men do that? 
Men don't even say I'm wrong today. Daughters of Tiziah, can they don't even have the guts of the unction of the spirit to say they're wrong. Nobody wants to take on the responsibility. I take on everything that happens here. It's me. I don't need no one to take on anything. They are gutless. Because they don't understand truth. God doesn't tell you to cleanse your neighbor. Cleanse yourself from all of your filthiness of the flesh and the rock. You begin in your own damn filthy mind. You show the young bath of the young son by your well-ordered house. By the way, you walk the way you carry yourself. That's how they learn. That's how they see the strength of Yah. Not by your ignorant mouth that cannot even utter even language properly. Listen, I will, my friend, to them. They did confess, for we have spoken against Yahweh. In be made by number 27, 7, we've never spoken against Yahweh, have we? Don't raise your hand. Don't answer me. We have Amma. The word Amma, we have formed words against Yah. We have formed our spirits against Yah. When you form your mind against reproof, you are speaking against Almighty Yahweh. Because those that he loved, those that he received, he, 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 he corrects them. He chastens them. Every son that he received, he corrects them. He's not coming down for Hamshamayim with his hand uh, and put a rod on your backside. Uh. Zokain reminded us that his rod was his Torah. It is the wisdom of his Torah. It is the knowledge of his Torah. You're not going to understand the dynamics of Yah's truth unless you understand the interpretation of a word. We have... We have spoken against Yah, Almighty Yahweh, and against you. Men will never say, I've spoken against you, Reach. I've spoken against you, Ma'ab. What I say to you, with him, I say to him, with him, with him and him, I say it in front of everybody. Why you do that? Because that's my, that's my love for him and her, them. That's what it is. It's my great fervor of compassion. He said, pray, they said, pray to Yah that he take away the Nahash, the spirit, the serpent, this powerful thing that caused my mind to turn away from Torah, to cause me to speak against Yah. What you do unto the least of these little ones, you've done it unto me. For me to rise up against, say, this man back here, I know he doesn't have the physicality to withstand me. I know he doesn't have the strength to withstand me. I know he doesn't have the physical apparatus to withstand me because I hit too hard. And I still hit hard. I'm using that for an example. And to take this man that is little, he has no violent streak in him. And for me to rise up against him, I'm not even a coward of a dog. For me to take this old man right here, damn, I don't care how tough he thinks he is. And for me to rise up to do him some hurt, I'm not even a damn man. I don't care who you are. For any of you all to do that, you're a damn jackass of a coward. Do it to me. Do it to me. You want to fight a real man, you're looking at one right now. Come on. Catch your plane here. Come on. And so what we do unto the least of these little ones, we do it unto Almighty Yahweh. So I know among us that this ark here, he has the least amount of strength, uh, of tenacity, uh, of physical confrontation. And what I do unto him, I do it unto Almighty Yah. To take advantage of his, uh, his, his inabilities, uh, it would be wrong. So what am I set to do to protect him and to defend him? Huh? You won't do it with me? You won't come against him with me? See, if you've done that, you'll get mad if I say that. You got some mess in you, man. Better get your heart right. Better get right, woman. You're going to die wickedly. Your whole countenance change. You drop your mouths open. I don't care. It shows you how wicked you are. You see what they did? What did they do when they realized they spoke against you? They, re they repented. See, who am I? I'm a wretch undone. Men don't say that today. We don't say that. You don't tell nobody you're wretched. Despicable. We rise up in the ignorance of our mind. 
I'm going to finish it today. Don't worry. It's going to be tough. We're just getting the surface right now. There's only one word I want to bring to your attention. It is not as much as about Nahash, which it is. <clears throat> Therefore, the people, the people, verse 7, Therefore, the people came to Moshe and said, We have sinned. For we have spoken against Yah, against you prayed, Palatuya, that he take away the Nahash, the spirit. You must pray that Yah take away that spirit. That's why you must confess it. And then the effectual Sadiq prayer, the Sadiq man availeth much, that he take away from us. And it says, and Moshe, not them, and Moshe prayed. He prayed for the people. And Yah said to Moshe, now listen now. I say, I will show you the ignorance of men. That were those that, I will say they had trouble, even those that visit us with these lions here. But this is the command of Yah. He says to Moshe, I want you to assad to form, to make a fiery seraph. I want you to make a seraphim. I want you to make a poisonous snake. Is that what he said? He used the word make. See, you know, you got to understand the word make to understand uh, that if, if he did something like these lions represent, then it, it, it opposes the commandment of Yah, the first commandment. Uh, he told him to make. See, a wise man, he understands the interpretation, the meaning, the purpose uh, of a word. Uh, he said, make a serpent. Did he tell him to do it? Did he tell him to make it? He told him exactly what kind to make. So does that defy the first commandment? Oh, you got that in that. That's going to call a car. Go to hell. You are stupid. This is a stupid generation. They're wise in their own conceit. And those are the only things they can talk about. They can't talk about a word of the wisdom of Torah. He commanded him to asa, to fashion, form, to make. He says, make, make a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he look upon it, shall live. What does that mean? Yisraya, when we do this, hear me, when we truly began to do an introspective search of our own Nahash. Then you live. Then you become strong. Yeah. It's easy for me to look at you and to condemn you. Same with you, me. But when we truly begin to look within, because what we do, we raise ourselves up above everyone. We raise our knowledge above everyone. We want to look more superior than everyone. Some of the most ignorant people will call me. This woman calls me yesterday. And I listened to this ignorant woman as she talked. Well, the Lord showed me, and I'm listening to this stupid woman. I said, why did you call me? Well, I want to know that because she was looking for the book of Hanukkah, Enoch. And she found that on our website, so she wanted to know, was it all right for her to read that? This is how stupid. Well, the Lord has been giving me a lot of revelation. The Lord has been showing me a lot of things. And the Lord has been giving me understanding. I said, I believe that your Be'el has. You understand? It's your own lording, marauding spirit. But that's what she called me for. And when I began to pour out this truth, it wasn't long. So, okay, thank you very much. That's the way we are. He lifted up this Nahash. He said, this is what you're given to. That's what this serpent represents. It's composition as well. You see, I had to find out what a word, the word meant. So he lift up this fiery serpent, and those that looked up and said, Whoa, am I? That's what we do. When Shalomo prayed, it said he spread his hands, and he looked unto the heavens of Yah and said, Oh my, what a great dynamic one you are. And that's what Nahash does, it lifts you up. See, that's what Nahash did to Havah and Adam. It lifted them up above Yah that you think you can hide. You think you can hide because you can talk. You think you can hide because you're white. You think you're high because you're black. You think you're superior because you're white. You think you're superior because you're black. You don't have a damn thing. So Yah says, lift up their spirit. Show them what they are. And those that looked up, they said, I'm a wicked thing. And those that said, hell no, I ain't looking up. I can save myself. I can deliver myself. There was my death. They died. 
Because Mavet and Muth means uh, those that are void uh, of the wisdom of the counsel of the moral rights, what is right before Almighty Yah. You understand? Did you know that? No, you didn't know it. Because we don't look at things that way. We're always out to prove what we know. I prove to you what he is. You don't know nothing. You don't even have the power of breath in your body. All that you know is vanity. And all the wisdom Shalomo received. He says, oh, vanity, sharp, vanity, 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 says the preaching man. Because we all die. What a die. Everybody wants to be wise today, don't they? Nobody wants to perform what they think they know. So he lifted up the serpent in the midst of them. And he said, everyone that looks upon it shall live. And Moshe made. Ah, did he break the mitzvah? Yeah. He made a serpent. You see what it said? You see that word made? You understand the definity of made? Perform, accomplish, did by the instruction. Did not Noach build the ark? Did he make the ark, ark of Yah? Sure he did. So he made, he made a serpent. And in this place in Torah, it uses the word Nechash. He made a serpent of brass. That's the word I want to deal with for the remainder, the word brass. When I saw that, I said, Yah, I've looked at this. We know the kingdom that shall arise the mixture of brass and the legs with the ore of iron. I won't get into that depth. I want to show us this. It says, uh, and the serpent was brass. And he put it upon a pole and it came to pass that if the serpent or the spirit of Nahash had bitten any man, when he looked upon the serpent of, when he looked upon this Nahash uh, of Nechosheth, when he looked upon the serpent of brass, he lived. When one identified with the Nahash and saw that this was the death kill to their lives, then they live. When a man look upon his ways and say that my ways are wicked and corrupt, only that man will live. What about the desire to see the corruption of, of our own ways? Instead of you trying to instruct someone, why don't you learn how to listen, damn it? You need to learn how to hear. There's nothing more beautiful than that. So Seri, I was sitting on the stoop of Raphael's. It was high. Seri, I said, I'm on up there. And so uh, Raphael, I'm trying to see if they both can get up there. They'll be all right. Well, Raphael said, no, you said what well, I told you to sit. Well, of course, she was looking at me when she said that. And when Raphael said that, she goes, I said, come to me, little girl. Because if Raphael saw that, you just come to me. That's it. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah. It's all right. And I looked at this little thing. I'm like, little girl. She goes, I said, come on down here. Come see me. I said, little girl. I said, Raphael, I saw that little girl. You, you may be in some trouble. Don't, don't go that way. That's what she did. That's the way we are. Not me. I'm so glad that he corrects me. I'm glad he corrects me. And not in his anger, unless he brings me to naught. I'm glad of that. He that is often reproved. First thing you see, you, can you tell when someone's stiff, stiff in their neck? They stiff in their neck. Destruction comes suddenly, and that is without any warning. Yah doesn't warn them no more. He's not even warning us. He's not even warning. We don't even have the sense of Yah's yere. Yare, his fear. We don't even have that. And that's the fact. We do some of the most vilest of things. And we don't even consider our ways a cancerous to us. This is what Nahash does. Unless we identify what's in us. 
I was talking, man, Zachin Shemi to me the other day, and what I was saying to me, I wonder, you talking to you like that, boy. I'm not going to repeat what I said, all right? It was not the most fondest of things that I said to me. I talk like that to me all the time. You all don't have to buy it. This is what refines me and keeps me straight. Why would I want to be somebody big among, what, 25, 30 people? That's silly. Why would you want to be big among us? Let us all just be little. Let's become like one of these little ones. Just be little. Hallelujah. He says that this serpent was made of Nehosheth, a brass. This is what Nehosheth represents. Hear me. See, I understand the interpretation of this word. It, under, it represents the fetters of bondage, of a lusty, wicked, corrupt mind. That's why he put that before him. And the kingdom shall be, shall be greater than all of these kingdoms. It shall have the brass legs and strong and powerful. Yet there's a mixture of clay there. Won't be able to stand. I will teach on the fourth kingdom one day soon. You see, if you want to be, present yourself as a wise man, compile the knowledge of the fourth kingdom, not with reading some books of some twisted man, and then tell me when you're ready to teach and I'll let you teach it. You want to get together and talk some non-essentials that have no power in the growth of anyone because if they did, you will look strong. When I, I, I go to the gym to get stronger. I go to the gym to make my body strong. I get up early in the morning to make my body strong and to get stronger. I want to live. Yeah. I want to live among y'all's people. I want to be around for him a little while. Yeah. So I do things that I know that will make me stronger. I want to eat in a way that I can be strong. So I won't despise the light wave when I get older. I won't despise what he tell me. Who are you to tell me? No, yes, sir, I do it. I won't despise that. I won't get upset with him. Man, you can't tell me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's all you want me to do, Zakin. What else? I'll get it done. For you. Yes, sir. I won't despise the way. I won't despise what he tells me to do. Anytime you despise an act where he instructs you or show you your way, you're full of hatred. You hate your brother. And you're going to hell, man. You wicked woman, you child of darkness, you're going to hell. The word brass. Now this has to have a figurative or correlation between us. He, he lifted up the very nature of his people. How do I know that? Can I tell you how I know? I had to search my bath of desire. And I found some inspiration of that interpretation here in Jeremiah. In Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 27. This is the root of Nahash. We saw that when they rose up against Yah, against Yah and his messenger, we see what happened. But look what Yah says. He said, I want you to make a serpent, a Sarah, and raise it up to show them their will and their way, and those that look up shall live. But look what he says in Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 27. Yah says, I have set for you a tower or a bachon. And that is an inspector, someone that inspects the value of your word. That is why the messenger, he always inspects the, our worth. He always inspects our praise offerings and our gladness. Our ma oh, he always inspects your countenance. When I was in the military, you that have been in the military, we have you that have been in the military. We have those that were in the, in the Marines and they were much tougher than the army. And so when they inspected you in the military, did they not look in your face? And they made sure that your hair was, it was, it was cut off, it was shaved up to here? And your mustache was way off your lips and you had a little mustache? And they looked for hair on your face, did they not? Did they not? And when they found, what, what is that? I see some little hair growth there. You paid for it. And now we can inspect each other. And even the world has a sense to know, no, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna follow the codes of the Marines. Am I right, Akmikaya? You are a Marine. Come on, Yaakov, you spent 26 years in the Marine. Well, they saw you with a beard today, Ach Yaakov. 
I don't know who tell them what they would say. They inspected everything. When I was in the military, they inspect with your hair. It had to be, you got a haircut, but it had to be, it had to be, the form of it had to be above your ears. Your mustache could not be on your lips like this. You cannot have a drop of hair, and your mustache cannot become the, become the, beyond the corner of your mouth. Had to. And if it wasn't that when the drill sergeant, when they inspected you, and especially when there was a great uh, inspection or what they call the fifth general, uh, when the general would come, he didn't look at anything. He'd just come through, look for two or three minutes, uh, and he's gone. But everything had to be spit and polished and shined. Uh, your uniform shined uh, and in order. You shaved that night and you shaved that morning. Everything had to be right. Everything. And they inspected you. But yet we don't want y'all to set the towers among us to inspect us. Dress you right and cover down. Forty inches all around. We despise him inspecting us. It says that uh, I have set you for a tower and of fortress, he's talking to the Nobi, uh, among my people, Yeremiah. For what reason, Yah? That they may know. That they may know and try what? Who tried their way? Don't, don't raise your hand and say you do it. Who ways are we trying? Are you trying my ways? He said that they may yada and try their ways. See, you think you know the book, but you don't know the word. See, we're going to examine and interpret a word. Their way. He said their way. That they made it. That's why he said, I want you to be like a fortress. I want you to stand as a bachun, as one that inspect that which is of a value. And make them know that they may understand, that they may know their ways. And he says, why? Because they are all grievous revolters. We never revolted against Yah, have we? And we saw that they revolted against Yah and his messenger. This is the power of Nahash. This is the strength of your daddy, the devil. He said they are revolters. They are sarah. They are stubborn. Can you tell a stubborn child? Can you tell a stubborn man? You touch a stubborn man, you feel the tensity of his body. He gets tense and all of that. Can you not tell a stubborn woman? That's what Sarah is. They're stubborn. They're stiff necked and they're rebellious. They rebel against Yah's truth. He said, What they do, they walk in slander, they walk in Shekha, they walk in lies. They walk in Shekha, they walk in Rochilech, Rochilech. They walk in lies. That's what they do. They're always talking about this and that, but they never see their way. See, a wise man, he interprets a word. Yeah. See what I'm saying? The brass, I'm, I'm dealing with the brass, don't worry. I got you. Amen. Okay. Yeah. Does it say they are brass? They are nikosheth. The nikosheth. He said they are brass and iron. There's a reason for the iron. I'll get to that. He said they're all nikosheth. They are of the spirit of holotry. They are bound by the fetters of holotry. They play romance in their mind. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 6.28, Jeremiah. They play fantasies in their own minds. And they don't even see their own ways. He said they are full of nechosh at their brass. And they got this ironclad will. And that's what Nahas does. It makes you become resolute. And nobody can tell you a damn thing. I'm nice. You're not nice, man. You're not even sweet. Oh, I'm God. You're not kind, woman. Not. So when we examine our ways, we can say, oh, man, I'm not. And we don't examine our ways, you say, you're talking to me, and I ain't going to say nothing. We're not as sweet as we think we are. You may be a clown, but that doesn't make you sweet. You may like to laugh and clown, but that doesn't make you sweet. They're all grievous revolters walking in slander. They are brass. They're, they're like a worthless harlot. 
the fetters, they're bound by Nahash. And that's why he lifted up this serpent. He made the image of the spirit. He made the image, this Sarah, the image of the spirit, this Tanim, this vile thing. And he said, lift it up, Moshe. And those that were able to acknowledge their ways, they looked up and said, Where am I? That's me, yeah. I'm a vile poisonous thing. My tongue uh, is an unruly evil. It's full of poison. One thing I will never let no one do, talk against you all. I don't care if they talk against me. I'm not going to let them talk against you. And I will never hide anything from you that others, strangers, whomever, will say to me against you. Man said something one day about something here, and I reproved him up and down. Well, you know, that's a thing called constructive criticism. I say, your constructiveness may not be what others think is constructive. I say, okay, you're going to say to this man because he's overweight, look at you, you big fat ass man. I say, to you it may be constructive, but to him it's not constructive. You know what he said after I finished with him? Can I tell you what he said? Can I tell you what he said? He said, Rayak, you're wise. You're wise, man. I appreciate you. And then the man, I know he's listening. He hears me and he sends money. He says, a lot of money. He said, Rayak, you're wise. I need to be taught. I understand. And he'll call and leave a message, Rayak. I enjoyed that message. So yeah, I know you're listening, okay? See, that's a man that has a platform of wisdom. See, when you correct a man like that, he will love you. The more damn fool will not love you. He will not love you. He said, they're all corruptors. Why? Because just like Yeshua, Yeshua, he says that all the sons of Yah, the men, those that are the sons of Yisra'ya, they have gone and served the gods, and we have forgotten. Almighty Yahweh, that created us in the earth in those days. We've gone and served the gods of our bellies, and we have forgotten Yah. Why? Because of this Nechosheth, this Nechash. Because it blinds your eyes to your ways. It blinds your, you, you know, if I do an up wrong you know, you got to get it right with that ark. There's not, any time we work at the end of the day, there's not an embracing in case I've done something out of the way to my ark. I want to make sure I'm right with him. Because I don't know if I'm going to die today. And there's not a time that we don't embrace and greet each other. And he goes, I say, well, you take care of what you need to. Yes, sir. And he does it because I see him. And he does it faithfully. I just enjoy working with you. Well, I'm not going to work you too hard, all right? I'm not going to work him hard. I'm going to work him. But I'm, work, I'm going to work as hard as him. Because I said to him, I will never discourage you because of work and hard work. Not people get discouraged because work is hard. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. That beans to pick. We're going to pick those peas, Yosef and I, next week. We're just going to pull them up, bring them over, and you're all going to shell them. And you want to hide yourself. He doesn't hide himself. Even in all of his mistakes, he still doesn't hide himself. It is right, my Zachim. Hallelujah. He calls his people brass. Nechosheth. Does that imply anything? Sure. We got to understand the root of this word, and I've searched it out. I've searched it out. I'll get to that. He speaks of a great warning to his nation of, because of the Spirit. Here in Weyira, Leviticus, Leviticus, quickly. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 18. Levit Leviticus 26, 18. Yah says, And if you will not yet, for all that I have done, I've warned you, I've rebuked you. If you will not, Shemach, if you will not listen to me, Yah says, I will, Yahshua, I will punish you seven times more for your sins. I'm going to purify you. Just like the seven agonies of Eeyore, but the trials. I have taken the whole book of Eeyore, and I've gotten through about 
30 chapters. I'm talking about line upon line, word upon word. And I started this years ago, and one day I'm going to finish it. And one day I'm going to preach that whole book and show you the nuances, uh, how everything is integrated in the book of New uh, Eob. You wise ones that are wise, uh, teach some messages on uh, the fourth kingdom. You that are among us, you're wise, you want to sit down and record it, sit down and teach. Talk legibly so people can understand. I will listen if it's worth something, I will put it on. You don't even have the legibility of your voice to speak. That someone will understand what you're saying. You got to draw. He's not going to give this. You think he's going to get this knowledge to those that are weaned from milk? You think he's going to get the interpretation of a word from those that, that, that can't even spell the word? Will not even try to define the word? He's not going to chance us to someone like that. This is a proven task here. He doesn't open up this revelation to me because I say, Oh, y'all give me understanding. This is simple to understand. He said his people are brass. Here was this serpent, this thing lifted up. When they looked up, but they were delivered. They were bitten, they did not die. And yet he says by the mouth of the Nabi, he said they're brass. They're These are people that their minds are in the, shedder, in, in, in the fetters of of the vileness of holotry and witchcraft and God worship. That's where their mind is. Because you've never worshipped, you have you. Sure you have. You walk by the mirror and say, boy, that ain't bad. Look at you. I want everybody to see that too, man. Let me chunk this in as granny was saying. See that God. You still got a God. Pull it out, damn it. Still got one. You don't look fine. And what about you? Well, I tell you what. I'm not a nuts hair behind many men. I put it on. I, I look right in it. Man stood before us. He loved me. Now he won't even speak to me. He plays music around here. I don't listen to it. He says to me one day, he says, man, I've traveled the world. I met a lot of men. Same man that said that we need to hear this man, but yet he will not hear me. He says, for a man to be as big as you and a big man, you know, you look well, man. You know how to lay it out. I don't need nothing like that. That didn't mean a damn thing to me. From him? It meant nothing to me because I would have sucked my gut in a little more and said, look at me then. Not from his mouth. I know who I am. I know who I am if I got on dirty blue jeans. I went in stores yesterday. The man looked at me. He says, uh, I was dirty as they come. I come in the house after Big Dad and I wash my face. I felt the shoes dusty. I go in the store. This man, he, he's walking. He looks at me. He got on a little tight T-shirt. Thought he got muscles. He looks at me, he says, uh, construction, businessman, you? I said, sure I am. I've been in the garden all morning digging and rolling hay, and that's what I am, I'm a farmer, man. So he looks at me. I said, that's right. You can't tell? There were other men in the store, he didn't walk up to them and say that? I know who I am. Manama Uza, my strength. I say, that's what I do, man. I've been in the garden rolling out straw. He looked befuddled. See, he didn't ask me that what I was. He began to watch me, began to walk the whole time he's watching me. He was curious. Who is that cat? You don't have to blow your trumpet, the horn. I don't do it. I don't mess with nobody. She's with me all the time. Don't hardly talk to too many people, but I talk to people. Yeah. I want to finish this up, Yisra Yah. We are 2619. Let me read verse 18 again. He says, And if you will not yet hearken to me, Yah says, I will punish you seven times more for your sin. Why? For what reason? Yah says, And I will break your gaun, your pride of your power. He's going to break that spirit of Nahash. 
He's going to break the damn white pride of the white mind. He's going to break the black pride of the white black mind. He's going to break it all. I don't give a damn what you all say. Listen, I heard Pat Robertson yesterday say, you that know who Margaret Sanger is, I do. Yosef does, all right. She is the one that invented Planned Parenthood. Her monologue or her constitution, Planned Parenthood is to eradicate the populace of those that are deformative and those that have no perfect markings, especially those that are unintelligent. And the main objective to the whole constitution of the Planned Parenthood is to eradicate the blacks, especially the black Americans. And so everyone is saying that Pat Robertson is a racist. Uh, look at all this racism. I said, isn't that me? Because he tell you the truth. That's what the Jezebel, that's, that was the whole purpose of Planned Parenthood. You find them in every community where there are Negroes in America. To the tour of between a half billion to a billion dollars a year to burn the babies and these dirty, slutty whores. That's all they do. And no one wants to talk about that. No one wants to identify that uh, because your damn whiteness uh, is afraid to confront the reality of things. Uh, and you're too cowardly in your blackness uh, because you're afraid you're going to fit. Damn the white man. Damn the whiteness of any man. Damn the blackness of any man. Give a damn who get offended at what I say. And so Pat Robinson said that the other day. And boy, it is just, it is almost going viral. He's racist, he's... Pre oh, see there? They say Pat Robertson is racist. This racist comment. I have read on this hole, this old bull butch dagger looking woman. I've read, I've searched out some of the, some of the things of Planned Parenthood. I do, Yusuf Ayah. I don't sit around twirling my thumb, being mad and being upset. I don't waste my time in that. I want us to understand and to know. I thought this morning, why is it that, especially these people in America, the ones of the dark, why are they so despised? What have they done, really? Hell, they really don't mess with nobody. In the hood, they blast each other, but they, what have they done? What have they asked this country for? Let's be honest, let's be real. All they ask this country for, I want to be a human being. And you don't constitute that. You don't legislate a human, a person. They have labored on the shores of this nation. They have labored in the bean fields. They are the ones that built the White House. They don't ask for nothing. A yards, the most despised people. Every image you see of them is so negative. You can't even buy little books for the children where they can see someone that even resembles them. It's wrong. It's not right. It's not right. And someone must declare it. And I'm not afraid to. They never see anyone with an image like that. I don't care what you, what you go in there and you ne never, never. And it's just a fact. Get them damn things out of your house where your children can. You can teach them their positive image. Hallelujah. You never. And once you eradicate the history of the past transgressions of this nation out of the history books. To eradicate that out of the minds of the children. How wicked. But I guarantee the Jews not going to let them do that with Holocaust. You better not say anything against a Jew. Hell, because you're anti-Semitic. And that's the truth. And if an ark is an ark, he will speak out against it. A coward won't do it. Because you got some damn trash in you. You got some evilness in you. We must identify their ways. See, your ways. He lifted up the serpent. And uh, he showed them their ways. Uh, Yah says in Leviticus 26, 19, I will break the pride of your power. Your pride doesn't mean a damn thing you've got. I will break your pride and I will make your heavens 
I will make your heavens as Brazil as iron. And that represents that Brazil is this harsh, strong opposition. I will make your heavens as Brazil and your earth as brass. It will be worthless. It will bring forth the... It's not this nation, everything it does. It brings forth the spirit of holotry and corruption. The minds of your children are bound in the fetters of corruption. They're, they're having sex at six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old because they're promoting sex on... Discovery Channel, every damn channel. And the mama sits up like a ignorant Jezebel, the daddy, like a pompous big belly dog. And these crazy spirits just entering into the minds of your children and you love them. You are a damn liar. He's going to bring down the, pri- the power of your pride. Your heavens uh, shall be like Brazil, not brass, but Brazil. That's how you say iron. It shall be harsh. It shall be cold. It shall oppose you. And believe me, the heavens are opposing this wicked generation. That's why we must understand the interpretation of a word. You must understand the interpretation of a word. You that are wise, understand the interpretation of the fourth kingdom, all right? Understand that. Search out the dynamics of that. Teach it for me. I will put it on the air. I won't even listen to it. I will put it on the air, all right? It says in the next verse, he says, And the earth shall be as brass, uh, as nechosheth. It shall bring forth the spirit of holotry, and it shall be the fetters of your bondage. Uh, that is what Nahash does. Uh, it brings us into the shackles uh, of bondage uh, that our minds began to play with the gods. Uh, the most supreme God, that's the God of your mind. Your own ways, they're much more superior than anyone else's ways. We got to seek out sin and eradicate it. We must do that. And you must be gunned in your house. And when your house is well ordered, it will bring about a shining amaret of light onto your, fi- your features. You look all gloomy and down and you walk that way because you have no strength of your surest testimony in your bosom. You can talk all you want to. It doesn't mean a damn thing, Israel. That's why you love the congregation of men like you that you can boast, you can show off and show what you know. That's what you love. It's not anything that is sensible of strength whereby it's going to bring about a revelation to the master because if you talk about something that's great, people want to hear. You've been in a place and they say, oh, that sounds, whoa. You know, men don't like when you talk like that. Because, you know, when you identify them, they get upset. Woe is me, like the publican, he said, yeah, woe is me. I'm a wretched man undone. You all heard what the ox said last night, Hayel Benjamin. What I said, we're always trying to show and prove what, and you know what he said? He says, Rayak, that I've been handling this wrong because, but because that's, that's what I've been doing. We've always tried to do that. See, a man like that, Yahweh blessed richly. A man like that, Yahweh blessed richly. We always want to prove and show what we know and trying to oppose others to show them how excellent our knowledge is. He said, well, I've been messing up. That's what I've been doing. It's not the talk you got, the game you got, baby. It's the way you walk. You can talk all that talk. Oh, I trust Yah. You don't trust Yah, man. Look at you. For me to live is your Shua, Hamashiach. When I die, I'm going to gain it all. You understand? You can talk that talk, it means nothing. It's almost like a big fat man telling you, well, you know, I'm getting in shape. You're not, well, wait till you get in shape and talk to me, man. Big old fat woman, she's always, she thinks she got something. Oh, girl, I just, stop it. I saw this woman yesterday, her arms were that wide. I said, what a shame. And I looked at this woman, I looked at her. I didn't have my shades on, so I couldn't look at her. In a disparaging way. I just looked at her. And she's sitting at her gut. And I looked. Her wind is down. Mine is down. So I'm looking. I look at this woman. I look like, woman, stop that. How do I know arms are that big? Because she had on the kind of shirt I got underneath my jacket. But my arms are out. And her arms, they were not. It was just an abomination. It's an abomination. It's wicked. We can't love ourselves like that. I will, man. 
If your husband has purchased a beautiful home for you, you gonna let rats and roaches overtake it and you gonna let it's gonna be filthy? Come on. That's the same thing with our physical bodies. It's amazing that people began a little regiment two or three days a week. And, oh no, I don't do that no more. When you stop? Oh, I suffer a while. Hold on, what is a while? I, you're going to lie to me, you're going to tell me the truth. Well, well, two weeks ago, well, you just, you, have, you haven't even started. I'll give you another two weeks, you'll be right back on it. You haven't even started. That's why diets never work. They work for the moment, they don't work. It must have, you must be a change here in your heart. And I love me more than I love a damn hamburger. I eat a hamburger today, two hours later, I forget how it tastes. I love me more than I love catfish. And I love me more than I love fried chicken. I love fried chicken. I love fried chicken. I love fried fish. I love fried steak. I love fried cornbread. I'm talking now, okay? I don't love no refried beans, though. French fries. Ah, no, I can't eat no French fries. Ah, come on. Every now and then. If I eat some French fries, this man, we, I won't mention his name, but this man, this man gives me a fit. I can't but acknowledge what he said because we go to the gym, he's strong as a bull, man. His back is thick, angular, man, I watch him. Man, this boy here, boy, he's thick, strong looking. Beautiful bath it is, huh? You get yourself in fit and shape. Fine, handsome man. That's right. Get yourself fit. Put down the damn bubble gum and the pop tarts. And pick up the hopscotch. Do some hopscotch. I used to beat all the children in hopscotch. None of them. That's right, ma'am. You cannot out double dutch me. Stop it. How about that? Let's get real. And that's what we need. We need someone. This is how we cover ourselves. This is how the hush covers us. Give you a prime example here quickly. Turn to, to uh, first Shamul, yeah, first Samuel. I've got a few more scriptures I'm going to close, all right? I told you, Sipia, I'm going to finish this up quick. Turn to first Samuel, first Shamul, yeah, 17. Look at this. First Samuel, 17 now. Look at the, look, 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 look at it. You're not harsh, it's not going to save you. Look at this man, this beast, this dog that fought against David. First Samuel 17, 5. It says, and the Philistine, Goliath, he had a helmet of what? Brass. Nechoseth. We should have the helmet of, uh, the helmet of what? What? We should have that assurance of the Yoshech, of Yah, the helmet of salvation. See, he had his mind, this word, nechoseth. I will show the root of it. It has its origin in the word nachash. He had on a helmet of his salvation. And that's what's saving us. He had on a helmet of nechoseth. He had a helmet of brass upon his head. Does it say that, Yisrael? Yeah. So when we see that in, in the renewed writing of the living power of Torah and the renewed covenant, we don't even try to search the Torah to find out uh, what this implies. We just read. We've been taught how to read and we've dumbed down ourselves. So when a man show us, uh, he had on the helmet of his life. It was brass. He had nechoseth. He had this nahash. He said, you sent a little damn peewee dog to handle me? That's who you sent to handle me, this little ruddy boy? Navi said, that's all right, nahash, but the dogs and the birds are going to pick your bones. Every unclean thing is going to pick your bones. He had on a helmet. And we don't have on the helmet of salvation. We don't have your shoe on our mind. We got our lusts uh, and the fetters of our own horror uh, and our wicked activities in our mind. Uh, it's it's evident on our faces. Our faces are, are like billboards. Uh, I'm keeping it real, you understand? Uh, this big beast, as huge as he was, uh, he had on a helmet of brass. Uh, his nechoseth. 
upon his head and his arms. And look now, and he was armed with coats of mull, this metal that was jointed together. And the weight of his coat was 5,000 shekels, what, of brass. We've covered ourselves with this spirit of holotry, with this nahash. You can see that dirty thing in your eyes, in your skin, and the filthiness of your skin, the uncleanness of your skin, your hands. He would then only lift up clean hands. Clean hands everywhere, not filthy hands that are full of this nechoseth, this nahash, this vile spirit that rises up against Yah. Rises, God. they rose up against Yah, didn't they? And they rose up against his messenger too. Moshe. He's going to use man, Yisra'ya. He, is always, he doesn't use boys. He, use, he doesn't use the Naha. He, use, he will bring a Naha to an Ish, but he won't use him. And an Ish has the physicality and strength. So when you say something, people look at you and see if you're disciplined by your own words. So when I talk, people look at me and they say, boy, he, wow. Okay. All right then. Yeah. It's okay, he's, ain't that bad looking for him. How old are you? There's this Arabic one day we were talking. He said, how old are you, man? And I told him how old he said, he said, <laughs> I'll say what he said. He said, why is that you black folks look so nice and so young looking? Man, how old are you? I see, people get nervous when you say something like that. I didn't say it, he did. That's what he said to me. You that old? I said, how should I look at that old? Oh man, always tell me, he said, I don't know how I feel to be 68, 67. Because I don't have no pain. He said, how does it feel? Oh, you get quiet because you, you know. That's where we are. Well, you love Torah, you will love you. Because Torah always refines us, Yisrael. And you love to be refined. You love to be corrected. You don't love correction. You, you're a fool. I don't care who you are. From me to you, I don't care who you are. You are flat out fool when you despise correction. You are a stupid, you're not even a jackass because even the, even the donkey knows his master's creed. But my people, they don't even know you. That's why you don't, you, you don't, you, you don't, you don't hold the, the donkey back or the ass that tread the corn. Let him eat. Man, he's, he's the one plowed that corn. He's the one that furrowed those rows. Let him eat. He, he's not going to eat it all. Oh, that's enough, Mr. Mr. Donkey. Mr. Cleveland, Mr. Donkey, okay, the donkey. All right, listen to this. It says, and the Philistine, it tells I was, he was clothed in verse 6, uh, and he had greaves. He had greaves, these guards of brass upon his legs. We walk in this nechoseth. We walk in this holotry spirit. That's what it represents. I know what it talks about. It has a, 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 a two-fold meaning, my heart. I, I know what I'm saying. It has an implication of figurative that defines it, uh, and it depends on the correlation of how it is used in Torah. It's just not something that is of a precious metal and is of value. It's precious to me because of my nachash. It's precious to me. My wickedness is precious to me. That's why I don't sell it out for the truth of Yah. I don't buy the truth. I don't buy the knowledge of you. I keep buying from the lies of my wicked mind. That's the root of this nation here. This is the, this is the mindset of this nation here. It buys its own lies. It will not buy the truth, Yisrael. So this man had on greaves, his legs were guarded by brass, and he had it between his shoulders. He was weighted down by this brass. But that's all right, the rock that the builders rejected, and the rock that you reject today, this truth. It has become the principle and the foundation of everything I speak today. It is the principal stone of all that y'all does, you understand? And that, that stone of Sodika found its way through all of that damn brass and cut his head off and the birds ate the dog's head and that's a fact Yisrael. so you can cover yourself with your grease you can put on your brass helmet and your ironclad spirit whereby you can't even hear from Hashemah if my people who are called by my name if they will turn from their wicked ways. Your ways are rasha, it is a criminal. 
We have opportunity, you have opportunity, she has it, you, we have it. You do right by all men. You never do your brother any physical harm. You don't do your sister any physical harm, not just with your verbiage, with, with, with your hands. You don't do it. The harsh will never let you move from that. It will never let you order your house right. Order my steps in your Torah, Yehaweh. Teach me, guide me every day. Send your anointing, Abba, I pray. He's ordering our steps today in his Torah and showing you you're stepping outside. You have on your Grease, you iron your nechosheth. It's nechosheth, just like a hoe. It's a whole spirit. It is a spirit whereby our minds are fettered in change of holotry and lust and every kind of act of performance of wickedness to go against Yah, to speak against Yah, to rise up against Him and His truth, how it proceeds out of the messenger's mouth. It is one that despise the light ways. His yoke is easy and the burden is light. And the only way you're going to know that, you must take and learn of him. You don't know the ways of Yah if you have not learned what the Torah says. And you don't see the excellence of that in Yahshua HaMashiach and what Yahu said. That's what you got to do. And that's just the truth. You can hide all you want to, but you're not getting by. You got to be washed, Yisra'ya. Your hands must be clean when you come before you. You cannot have blood on your hand. And our hands are dirty. They're dirty physically. I want to close with two verses and show us the resolution that when we understand the interpretation of a word. That's what you... My Zachim Haliya, he made a statement in the office. He used the words. And I can't say this. I said, no, improper word to use. I say that word implies there's resolve, there's excellence, there's an effervescence, there's a strength. I say this is the word you meant to use. It's okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see. I say now that what that word defines. So how can you define the order of Yah when you have no ability uh, to understand, to know the Yada, the interpretation of a word? How are you going to tell someone something when you don't even understand what a word means? How can you express the, 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 the validity and the character of something when you don't even know what a word means? When you don't even understand the interpretation or the pace here, the wisdom, the knowledge, and that means uh, the resolution of what that words bring, uh, what resolution comes by that word. How can you do it? It is just, uh, it, is, it's, it, is, uh, it is ignorant. It is repugnant. I want to close with these two verses here. That's enough today. Akmikaya, you got bread. You got light bread today, all right? This is not that hard bread. This is light bread. I like light bread at times. I don't want no white bread. I like light bread. Hallelujah. I don't like them little things. Like when I want some bread, I want to slice that like that. And I sure love them. <clears throat> okay. You know what kind of bread I like? Bring me some of those biscuits. Them little ones we have for Tiber, uh, for, for Pesach, those were. I like them little thin. I like biscuits like that. I, I ate five or six of them one day. Like thin biscuits like that. They were tough. You couldn't sop no gravy with them. You just throw them down in the gravy like a little cracker and make you a gravy cracker meal. How about that? I want to read these two verses that I'm going to close. It says that in this time that we're in, that this spirit, Nahash, it deceives. That's why you got to understand the interpretation of a word. In Revelation, Gilyana chapter 12, verse 9. And I will show us how we resolve this. Of everything I said, if we don't understand how we bring about the solution, then everything I said was in vain, all right? It has no pertinent value to us at all. But it says in Gilyana 12, Revelation 12, verse 9. It talks about this great Tanim, this 
He is the, he is the father of Nahash, the great dragon. He was cast out of the heavenly realm. It calls him oh, the old Nahash, the old serpent. He is called a Shadim, a demon, a devil. And he is also known by the name of Hashatan, the deceiver, the one that is full of Shekha and lies. It tells us his pedigree here, which deceives. He speaks Shekha. He was a murderer from the beginning because of one reason. He did not live in the Torah. I wanted to incorporate all of that in Daniel here, but I don't. It takes too much time. I open the door, you run in, and then you find the, the proper ingredients to make the, the light bread that you can live by. He deceives, he deceives with falsehood and deception and lies. He deceived not part of the world, but the whole world. The whole world is going to be deceived. That's why Yah tells us we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Come out of the world's my mentality. Cast out that guy on. We had one that was, he would always say, pride. And I said to him one day, you're full of it. You're full of your own pride, man. I said, that's your problem. I said, notice now, you are the one that always say that. Pride. Pride. I said, that's you. Well, you that are so easily manipulated and you know you don't see that because you base things on emotions I don't pride I said you're full of it I said here you said that and it's a lie because it's not in the book you cannot find it no way it is a damn lie so I took him to the book and showed him I said now justify what you just said well you know okay then I, I won't say it that way see I didn't tell you all that because some of y'all will get emotion, emotional for him and get the, get the hate on me you said that him? You're not coming here changing nothing. I say it's a flat out lie. That's a lie. You said, you used the word made, I saw, formed to fashion you. I say it's a damn lie. She can't and could not handle my speech. With all of his gang saying he could not. He may handle you, but he couldn't handle me. You understand? I say it's a flat out lie. And he knew it was a lie. That's why he said, well, Okay, then I'm using the wrong word. I said, no, the statement is wrong. Not just the word. The whole parameter of your statement, it is a false lie. And I was tough, too. And I got right up in his face. He was right there in my office. <laughs> See, you can sit down in the house with him. Y'all talk that rosy, cherry lollipop stuff, but not me. You come in my presence, I'm going to show you your sin. He deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the Erech, and the angels were cast out with him. This is what Nachash does. It deceives your whole world, Yisrael. We are a world of iniquity. That's what our mind, it is a world. It is a world to itself of Ovon Ovin. That, that we do every kind of depraved thing of depravity, every kind of vile thing. We do it here. We do it in our hearts, Yisrael. So he deceives us by our own Nahash. And we form this nechoseth, this brass mentality that is ironclad. And instead of us putting your shoe, let the same mind that was in your shoe be on us. We put on the same mind of, of Goliath that we're going to overtake you. We're going to take down the little one. We're going to take down this ark because he's weak. But you're not going down. Get behind me. Yeah. Moshe says, stand back. And see the Yoshach of you I like that preacher. I don't mind sitting down hearing this. I don't feel no ways tired. What's the next line? Come to far. I come so far from the Torah of Yam. Yoshua told me that this way would be easy. But my sins have brought me down to the pit, my wicked ways have captured me. Damn it, we sing lies. Can you do that? 
You ever tried that? No, you. Can you do that? Yeah, you can. You can move that thing, can't you? That's all right. I got you, little girl. Hmm. I don't believe, I believe you have brought me to this great trial. Your sure has never forsaken me. Oh, my sins are grievous to my abound. Though I'm a liar and I am a deceiver, dumb of your sure is sufficient for me. I, I like that. I don't know any words in this song. And that was a song with my song back in the days with Mama here. Now, we weren't frolicking around. I just like listening to the song. It was by Lamar, Lamar Dosha. What was the song? I forget the words. Lamar Dosha. Got my song, boy. I just, I listen, I just, just looking at you. I don't need nothing else. I don't need to touch you. And that was the truth. Hmm? I want to prove that. Ain't about no thing like that, girl. I was a love you. And I was wicked as they come. And I could have been a rolling stone, too. Ain't about that. You understand? It was deeper than that. Silly man. You think marriage is sex. You are silly. It's deeper than that. It's deeper than that old woman back there. Mama. She said, these men, they find out what they got when they come around the okay. She may be a little loose at that time, but she, she knows that's the truth. They realize what little they possess. Can I give us a solution of the interpretation of a word? This is it right here. There's only, only one way you're going to overcome that. And one of the most prophetic voices of all readings of Torah, Yahshua speaks. He gives us the solution right here. Can I tell you? It's found in Yakahana and John, chapter 16, verse 13. This is the only way we're going to prevail against that spirit. John 16, 13. It says, but when he, who is he? The living mind of Yah, the Ruach of truth. It says, must be the Ruach of truth. The Ruach of Imat, the Ruach of truth. He said, when is come. Now, you all know I've defined that word many times, Bo. When the Spirit has entered in, come upon, when it has come into us. When it has come, when it has entered into us, uh, when the Ruach of Truth is come, uh, he says that it will nahal. He will nahal. Now I had to, I was captive by the word nahal. I want to define that in my closing. He said that the Ruach will got you. You see, men will look at that word and they are so wise in the vernacular and with linguists or the, linguist, the linguistics of a tongue uh, that they don't have to look up the word. I have to. I have to search the Torah and understand in this text uh, how this word Nahal was used. Uh, this is what it says. He will guide you. Nahal is Nahal. This is what it means. I want to read it just precisely. It is to give rest, to lead you with care, to guide you to a watering place or station. To cause you to rest. To bring you to a station place of rest. To guide you. It is to refresh you. And above all of that. The culmination of the climactic point of it all. It is to do one thing. To feed us. Feed. Now, hush doesn't feed you. When the rock of truth is come, when the mind of Yah has come into your processing of the interpretation of a word, he will guide you into all truth. Into all truth. Not some truth, but all truth. All truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will show you things to come. 
He will show you the power of the Sinahas. That's what it is, Yisrael. When the Ruach is come, when it bow, when it enter into us, He will guide us. He will nachal. He will feed us. Yah will feed us. Uh, just like He did with Yisrael. Yahweh. Even though they were in the, uh, they walked around the way, He gave them bread to show them how light their affliction was going to be. And He overcame the nations that were around them. Uh, as they snorted to rise up against them, He subdued the nations for them. Uh, and they despised the light way of Yah. They wanted to prove to him that they were as strong as that. We're not as strong as Yah. We don't have the ability of Yah. We don't have the power of Yah. That's why he must feed us. Feed us, Yah. Nurture us by your Ruach HaKodash. That we will have the place to rest at night. Our minds will rest. Our labor will not be in vain. Because we trust you. You bring us to the place, the station to water, to eat, and to give us rest. In your sure's name. Riches and blessings of Yah upon you all in your sure's name. Come on, Zakin. Yah brought you all, Israel. His riches rest upon you. For as Hava, Israel, has love towards his people. Because if he didn't reprove us, Israel, he wouldn't love us. We, he, if he doesn't take the time to instruct us as the Avat would instruct his son or his daughter, then he would not love us, Yisrael. Yeah. So he's, he showed his Hava by his instruction, by his reproof. And even after all that, he leads us and takes us by hand, Yisrael, yeah. and say, this is how you do this. He helps us take the first step, Yisrael. Yeah. So let us not despise the instruction and the correction of Almighty Yahweh. Let us shoot. Let us turn at his reproof. Let us turn from our, our ways and our paths and the direction we think is right. There's only one direction that is Sadiq that is right, and that is Yahweh's direction. And it's by a straight and a narrow way. There's no curves in it. There's no bypasses. You don't, go, you don't skirt around the, 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 the tough and the tight areas. You have to come in at the door. And that door in that way is Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. But let's stand to our feet, Yisrael. And let us continue to pray and be mindful of those that are weak and sick in their bodies, Yisrael. That Yahweh will, at his time, strengthen and that he will heal. Hallelujah. Almighty Yahweh, we do thank you for this day you have given us, this Shabbaton, which we can eat and we can rest and we can enjoy the reassurance of our salvation, our Yahshua and Yahshua HaMashiach. We do ask that those that have listened by the via of live stream, those that have come and gathered with us here at Teshua Community, that you would keep them Abba Yahweh, and that your Melakim, your Malat, will be encamped round about all Yisrael to instruct and to keep us Almighty Yahweh. And all things we do, Barak you, we give you Toda. And we truly Toda you, Yahweh, for Yahshua HaMashiach. We do declare that name. Hallelujah. 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 Barak Yisrael, Yah Barak Hallelujah.